Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to create an interactive stopwatch using JavaScript. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Sup guys, let's create a stopwatch. Head to your HTML file, then we will create a container to hold our stopwatch. Div ID equals, I'll name this time container. Then we're gonna close it. Within our time container, let's add a div for the time display. ID equals time display. I'll add a time, zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, hours, minutes, and seconds. Let's close that div section. We'll add three buttons, start, pause, and restart. Button ID equals start button. I'll put this within a class. Class equals timer button. Let's close the button, add some text. The text will be start. Let's copy this button, paste it two times. The second button is a pause button. The text will be pause. Next will be a reset button, reset. The text is reset. That is everything for our HTML file. Let's head to our CSS file. Let's begin by adding some properties to the timer button class. I'll set a width of 80 pixels, a height of 30 pixels, a border, three pixels solid is good, a border radius of 12 pixels, a background color, uh, let's select a hexadecimal value. Pick whatever color you want. I'm going to pick a dark gray color. You can always use a color picker to select a color. I'll set the color to be white. I'll set the cursor to be a pointer. When we hover our cursor over that button, then we have a cursor pointer. Then I'll change the font family. Font, family. I'll pick this font with the backup of monospace. Yeah, cool. Let's change the time display right here. This is an ID, time display. I'll edit the font size, font dash size. This will be 75 pixels. I'll select a color. Uh, go ahead and pick a color. I'll select maybe that, that looks good. Sweet, I'll change the font family. Then let's add a background color and center everything. This will be our time container. Text align center. I'll add a border, three pixels solid. Border radius of 25 pixels. Background color of, this is a dark gray color, six twos. Yeah, there we go. So there's our CSS styling. Our CSS styling is done. Our HTML file is done. Let's head to our JavaScript file. Let's select all the elements that we'll need. First is the time display. Let's get that ID, time display. I'll store this as a constant. Const time display equals document dot query selector. We're selecting an ID. The ID is time display. Next is our start button. Let's copy this, paste it. Start button, start button. Then our pause button, pause button, pause button. Then reset button, reset button. The ID is reset button. Here's the variables we'll need. Let start time. I'll go ahead and set this to zero right away. Let elapsed time equal zero. Let current time equal zero. Let paused, this will be a Boolean variable. 
If our timer is currently paused, we'll set this to be true. False if it's running. Let interval ID let hours, HRS is fine, equal zero. Let mins for minutes equal zero. Let then sec for seconds equal zero. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add event listeners to each of our buttons. Start, pause, and reset. Add event listener. I'll fill these in momentarily. Pause button, then reset button. Then we'll declare a function to update our time. Function update time. Let's fill in these event listeners. These will each be click. We'll use an arrow function expression. I'll just copy this and paste it. Okay, let's begin with our start button. We'll check to see if paused is true. If paused, we'll take paused, set it to false, Calculate the start time. Start time equals date dot now method. The now method of date will give you the current date and time in milliseconds minus elapsed time, which will initially be zero to begin with. Then we'll begin our timer. Interval ID equals set interval We'll need a callback. The callback will be update time. Let's invoke this function every maybe 75 milliseconds. That should be good enough. Let's fill in the update time function. We'll calculate how much time has passed. Elapsed time equals whatever time it is right now, date.now method minus the original start time. This will be a time in milliseconds. We'll have to format it so that we can display it within our timer. Let's take our seconds, set this equal to math.floor method. We will pass in our elapsed time divided by 1000 because it's normally in milliseconds, modulus 60. I'm gonna put these within parentheses. It's a similar process for minutes except this section is 1,000 times 60. That will be 60,000 milliseconds in every minute. Let's calculate the hours. Hours, 1,000 times 60 times 60. Then we'll need to update our display. That is time display dot text content equals I'll use a template literal we'll display the hours colon the minutes then the seconds let's take a look to see what we have so far we'll have one issue let's press start you can see that it's currently running but when we display zeros I would like two zeros Let's add a zero as padding for any single digit numbers. I'll create an inner function. Function pad will accept a unit. We will return. This will be a ternary operator. It might be a little difficult to understand. So we're going to add a zero to the front of our unit, whatever we pass in. Hours, minutes, and seconds. We'll access the length property. If we add a zero to our unit, what's the length? Is that length greater than two? Question mark. If it is, we'll simply return unit. Otherwise, we'll prepend a zero plus unit. Then we'll invoke the pad function. Our seconds equals invoke pad pass in our seconds. Do the same thing with minutes and hours. Minutes, hours. 
Then let's move this line down. Right about here. Okay, we should have some zeros as padding now. Yeah, there we go. One, two, three. So we have no way to pause this timer. Let's work on that next. Let's head to our pause button. We'll check to see if not paused, then we will set paused equal to true. We'll calculate the elapsed time equals date dot now minus our start time. This will save how much time has passed in milliseconds. Then clear our set interval method. Clear interval will pass our ID as an argument. Okay, now we should be able to start our timer. One, two, three, and pause. And you can see that it's paused. Lastly, reset, and this one's kind of easy. Head to our reset button. We'll take paused, set that to true, clear our timer, take start, elapsed, and current time, set them all to zero, take hours, minutes, and seconds, set them to zero, then lastly, change our time display to all zeros. Time display dot text content equals zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero. Oh, then make sure you don't add this let keyword. Then we're creating a local variable. Okay, this should work now. One, two, three. We can pause. We can reset. We can start again and reset. All right, everybody, that is a simple timer. If you'd like to make a more advanced version, you could add milliseconds. And well, yeah, that's a basic stopwatch using JavaScript.